Okay, tying in a little bit early tonight on Facebook Live. We wanted to make sure that we've got our tech buttoned up. Yep. So we're redirecting to the page. I think we're doing well here. We are hey. streaming live. Wow, it's gonna be so nice to be able to be on time and have everybody be able to find us. Isn't this great? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Love it. So, um, and Sandy, I'm glad you wore your red to, to, to root on the Red Sox and your earrings. Show everybody yeah. your earrings. For those of us yeah. since. Yes, a true well, fan right here. Yeah, we've got you three sure Red are. Sox fans here. We so hopefully we don't have too many from Houston who are going to boo and hiss us, but you're ahead. So <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Can. We're the underdog. I know. You're in the catbird seat right now. Yeah, yeah, they certainly are. They certainly are. All right. Not over till it's over. That's right. I was just listening to a podcast where they were recalling um, the pennant race where it was the Red Sox against the Yankees and we were down three to zero and we came back and won the four games and won the pennant. It was like so wonderful. Guess who was at those night games, including 1.45 in the morning when the homer. Oh, wow. I was there for the, the, the Dave Roberts steal. I was, I was there for all that. Wow, that's exciting. It was a great time. Oh, that was hey. a special year. Hey, we got 26 people on. Oh, well, I guess we'll get started then. 26 Shane. people who are really bored right now. This yeah, okay. Unless you're a baseball fan. All right, so welcome everyone. <laughs> I'm Coach Nancy, and, and you can see that I'm joined by Coaches Sandy and Rick. So you got three of us tonight. So let's get into it now that we've chit-chatted. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about the important benefits a variety in the diet. And of course, our focus will be on weight management. And there's really a lot to say about variety in terms of why we need it and how we can actually use it more effectively as we all work to protect our healthier diets. And as we discuss variety, we wanna make sure to include our newest entrees in the conversation. And already many of you have offered recipes and ideas on our Facebook page. So we're gonna cover those and a whole lot more because we're gonna be asking you to continue to share your ideas and recipes and we're gonna share some of our own. Now, there is one big picture point that I wanna make as we get into this and it's related to those of you who've joined us who are on Decision Free. Now, obviously you're not eating vegetable and fruits at this time, but we didn't wanna limit our discussion tonight. So we definitely wanna include ideas that you can use indecision free, but also we recommend that you be listening for ideas that sound really good to you and bookmark them, make notes of them mm -hmm. so that you can be trying them as you transition into phase two. So with that guys, you know, who's joined us? Let's welcome some people. Well, I want to say hi to Cheryl from my Tuesday group. Hey, Cheryl, it's awesome to have you here. I want to say hello to my sister, Lini. Hey, Lini. Great. All right. Wonderful. Jennifer. Also, I've uh, worked with you in the past, uh, one of our real regulars here. Really great seeing people uh, uh, joining us now. Tanya. Of course, of course we have Bob. Of course. Um, uh, Brent of Cucamonga. Yes. And well, he's rooting for the Dodgers. Wow. Oh, I'm so yeah. surprised. <laughs> what a surprise being from California. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dana. he's our biggest fan. Sue Lopez <laughs> saying hi to Sue uh, Sternberg. Excuse yep. me. Uh, all right. And Susan Hamilton was saying that was right after I met my husband, <laughs> my now husband. Oh, the, the Red Sox we were talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And Marsh is here. She's one. She's always here. I love it. Tanya. We've got some of our regulars and some newer names. So this is great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And if you're new tonight joining, um, if, you, if you would be nice enough to say hi, we'd love it. We'd also love to know where you're from and maybe even which phase of the program you're in. So guys, we have a ton to cover here. What do you say we, we rock and roll? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, Sounds good. Building off of your comments, Nancy, our main goal tonight is to review and share recipes that you can use this week to help you stay on track, whether you're in the weight loss phase or working to manage your weight over time. And while we're going to focus on the new entrees for sure, we don't need to be limited uh, to those. Any conversation around recipes that work for you, don't uh, hold back. We need thoughts and ideas from everybody. But before we get into the specific recipe talk, let me take a minute to set this up first with a conversation about how important 
variety is. Variety is one of several different aspects of food that influences our food choices. But it's very easy to walk through life and to not think much, not give any thought at all even to the different factors that actually affect what we eat, when we eat, and how much we eat. Yet there are factors. In the published research, they're often referred to as food cues. Food cues that influence our food choices and they do it every day, throughout the day. And here's the rub, we're often unaware of them. So that's sort of what makes this really interesting. These food cues in today's food environment make weight management harder. And we're gonna get into that. We have some fun examples about that in addition to the recipe talk. But there's also a positive message here about these food cues. By simply being more aware of the fact that they exist and what they are, we can turn them around and use them to our advantage so that they support our goals at healthy eating and better weight management. So guys, let's get into it here. Um, our, our main focus is gonna be on variety, but uh, let's, let's tease this a little bit more. Another food cue that absolutely influences our food choices is portion size. So research is really clear about this. The larger the portion of whatever food is in front of you, the more of that food you are likely to eat. So Sandy, Nancy, we had such a blast talking about this and we were going through some of the classic research on portion size and how it drives people to eat more. We have to bring our audience into some of this research. Sandy, could you share the, the movie theater popcorn study? It's just oh, ab absolutely. I was a bit floored by this, but here's the gist of it. 158 moviegoers in Philly, randomly given fresh or stale, we're talking two week old popcorn, <laughs> so fresh popcorn or stale popcorn, and they were given it either in a medium or large container, and they at the end, you know, came through the, the, the theater uh, lobby there probably, and uh, they were measuring how much they ate um, from, these, from these two uh, selections here. So fresh popcorn eaters ate 45% more when, get, when it was given to them in large containers. Mm -hmm. Get this though, this is, <laughs> this is the part that really surprised me. Two week old popcorn, <laughs> even though people didn't like it, wasn't palatable, they still ate 33.6% more popcorn than those who were given a smaller container of popcorn. So <laughs> it's just crazy, isn't it? Hey Sandy, that popcorn's awful. Could you pass me the bucket? <laughs> <laughs> and oh my other, gosh. The, the yeah, thing about I, these I'd probably cues, be the, right there with the stale popcorn eaters. I can tell no, you. No, I, yeah, if it's, if it's there, you eat it, right? And the, the, the real, the, the, challenging thing here is that in that, and they said it in that study, they were unaware that they were eating more yeah. food. That's just what yeah. makes this so challenging. Mm -hmm. Nancy, there was another classic study, and then we'll move into variety. Can you um, share about the bottomless balls of soup study? Absolutely. So picture this, they got 56 people and they go into a restaurant style place. There's seatings for four at each table. And there are two groups. Two people are sitting in front of a soup bowl, just a normal soup bowl. The other two are sitting in soup bowls that have a tube underneath the table running up into the bowl so that they can continue to add soup as the person is eating it. All right. Like so candid some, camera. Isn't, oh it is God. totally right. So you've got half the people eating just out of a bowl of soup and the other half unknowingly eating a, a, a soup but doesn't ever go down. Yeah. So when they finished, they discovered that the people with the, um, the bowl that was connected to the tube ate 73% more soup mm -hmm. and expressed no more fillingness than the people that ate just the regular bowl. So they were not even aware that they were eating more. They had no sense of being any fuller, That's even right. though they ate 73% more soup. Pretty yeah. amazing. That is the insidious thing about portion size. When yeah. there's more there in front of you, you're not even aware of it, but the tendency is to eat more and usually a lot more. Just one last quick one, guys. They put people in the research study where they, they had them in the laboratories 11 days in a row. They fed them breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And compared to the, the first run around where a certain amount of food, they increased the portion sizes. 
the net net of this was that they averaged over 400 calories extra on the days where the foods were bigger uh, for all the meals. And again, they were unaware that they had eaten more. Didn't, didn't occur uh, in their conscious awareness. Mm. So that's a food cue. Portion size drives us to eat more and we're largely unaware that we're even doing it. But again, our main theme here is we can turn this around and we can use this to our advantage. So higher, uh, bigger portions of healthy food, we can maybe have, support us to uh, eat more of the foods that are going to fill us up and insulate us from the uh, tempting foods that are out there in our uh, food environment. Now let's focus guys on variety because this is really the, the centerpiece uh, food cue that we wanna talk about here. Research is clear on this one as well. The more food variety that you have present, you will eat more of that food. They've done this with research on being presented with four different sandwiches versus one kind of sandwich. People ate more when there were four sandwiches present. They've done this research with different types of yogurt versus when you're sat in front of and you can eat as much as you want of one kind of yogurt. More variety leads to, doing, to eating more. And then just this year, 2021, they did a summary of all the studies. So this is sort of the definitive statement about this. A 30 different studies were put into this meta-analysis and their conclusion was, and I'll just quote from their research, higher food variety is a robust driver of our food intake. So again, the more food is there, the more of a problem it is. And guys, is this a problem in our food environment today? The variety of high calorie foods that are thrown at us or what? All you have to do is rock through the grocery store. Yeah. Right so I want street. to ask our audience, get ready to type here. We, um, we did this in our earlier meeting and it was really fun. You know, you can get different sources, you can get different numbers, but just off the top of your head, how many different types of Doritos do you think there are? Doritos. Doritos. Okay. Let's throw some numbers in the... Quickly in type, yeah. type your response. How many different types of Doritos do you think there are? Don't be crazy now. <laughs> All right, we got one in thousand. at 11. <laughs> yeah, 11, 20, 11, 11, 20, 20, 10. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. All Keep right. I'm coming, 20. Keep coming. As, as you guys are responding, I'm going to just get my screen up. I have no idea. Seven. <laughs> Seven. Oh, Candace is going wild. She went 25. Woo! Wow, Candace. Hi, Candace. All right. Okay, I, are we ready for the big reveal, guys? Oh, Dara's guessing 15. Yeah, tell us. Oh, I definitely think so. <laughs> Hold your breath, guys. Can you see it? 102 yep. Dorito flavors around the world. 100. <laughs> And two, of course, I'm not sure I always want to get my sources, my information sourced from the Now That's Nifty website. <laughs> but uh, this guy, he, 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 this is a passion of his. He, he has every bag, a picture of it, uh, and he goes through them all. Now, to be fair, a, a whole lot of them are here from the United States, but he looks at Doritos from everywhere, including the, the, the Far East. So there are some that you've never recognized, but still, the point again, 102, just extraordinary. It's just unimaginable. Yep. Mm. So let's um, like just to really hammer this point that there is so much variety of tempting high calorie foods. We're gonna do something else that we did in our earlier meeting that was really fun. So as you're watching here, uh, just play along with us as I pull up. Okay, here we go. What food are we talking about now, Nancy? Pop-Tarts. Pop tarts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me share my screen. Just trying to get Zoom up. Hold people on. Are, I bet people are Googling Pop Tarts right now. Just send yeah, us know, your I question. <laughs> oh darn. I'm having trouble getting my getting my screen. Here we go. All right. This is um here. You know, this is like a like a very portable food, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm trying to get this to come up here. All right, we're seeing the Doritos. We're seeing your name. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. It's worth the wait, guys, <laughs> to see this. Here we go. Okay, all the pop. Now we were expecting what, Sandy? Yeah, uh, a dozen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Sixteen, maybe. 
Yeah, yeah. so all the Pop-Tart flavors. So this just comes at you in waves now. So there's the Pop-Tart Bites, Frosted uh, Blueberry. There's the Peach Cobbler, the Tropical Mango. Um, boy, Nancy, you and I were stumped at this one. We're yeah, like, Sandy figured it out. Yeah, Sandy, much more, with word games. Yeah. more savvy than us. It's the mystery flavor Pop-Tarts. Okay, continue. That didn't get a great waiting though. I think it's because <laughs> nobody else understood it either. Yeah, I don't think so either. That only got one and a half stars. So look, there's a lot of these wash over you. The red, white, and blue Pop-Tarts, the lemon cream Pop-Tarts, and some of our old favorites that we know and, and probably grew up with. But the list, guys, it just keeps going and going and going. So again, what are we talking about here? Variety. When you're presented with a greater variety of foods, no matter what the food is, you're more likely to eat more of it. And in today's food environment, that is a problem. And so just as an exclamation point, I think I'll just share one final one, guys, because this one is America's number one cookie. I'm wondering if our audience knows what America's number one cookie is. I think it's your favorite cookie, isn't yeah. it? Uh, excuse me, please. <laughs> You have a reputation, Rick. I think you I left that cut. cat out of the bag. Before. Yeah, I think we all know what it is. <laughs> all right. So can you guys see that? Nope. Nope. Not yet. All right. Oh, Steve said oh, Oreo. Debbie said is. Oreo. See, they've got your number, Rick. <laughs> yeah. So here's another person who's really, you've got an interest in this in this area of junk food. Not only does he list and show pictures of the over 100 different, that's, you heard me right, over 100 different Oreo flavors, he goes through and ranks them and talks about them. He actually has rank ordered them. It's a, quite a stunning achievement that, that he has pulled off here. And I have to hats off to him. Well, so, and again, when you think about it, it's a favorite cookie. And then they, you know, everyone, they keep coming out with flavors for the holidays and everything. So, of course, you got to try it, right? So yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I see Debbie had guessed chocolate chip, but a lot of Oreo votes there. Okay. Hopefully our feed is back. Uh, the feed was interrupted. Bob just told us. Oh dear. But the point here that we've made is there are food cues. We're largely unaware of them. Portion size is, is a huge one. If you have more food in front of you, you're more likely to eat more without usually being aware of it. Variety is another one. And that's the one that we're really focusing on here as we turn the corner and talk about a variety and the recipes that work for you with HMR entrees for decision-free folks, as you had said, Nancy, uh, without vegetables in them, or Healthy Solutions Phase 2, HMR entrees with vegetables in them. So that's really the question here. And we really would like to make a, a particular point to bring up and talk about our newest entrees. And we're really excited about them. So let's see if we can get some recipes there as well. Now, Nancy, this whole idea of variety, you know, how does it support you? Just oh, get healthy? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge for me because the more choices I have that I like and mm -hmm. can enjoy, it's easier for me to eat healthy. So I don't feel deprived. I don't get bored. I'm like, oh, God, I can't have the same thing that I had three nights in a row or, you know, I, I'm just, I'm bored. I don't have that happen because there's so many options that I have that I do enjoy and I continue to find new ones. So for me, it becomes easier to eat healthy and, and I'm less likely to just, because I like, I enjoy it. So it's, it's easier not to get into some of the other things that aren't as healthy. Yeah. I'm wondering if our audience has an answer to that question, you know, how does variety help you when you're trying to eat healthy? Sandy, yeah. as people are thinking about that and responding, you know, yeah. what, what, how does it support your efforts and your commitment to eat a healthy diet? Well, gosh, I think um, because I have, I've always got my radar up for something new to try. It keeps it exciting for me, like mm -hmm. just to search out some new ways to make the entrees, com some combos, whether it's combining our products with condiments or fruits and vegetables. And, um, I swear, you know, I've been eating these foods for going on 20 years. You guys have been eating them longer and I'm always discovering something. I had two new recipes today that I'd never tried before. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and to me that keeps it exciting, you know, and it, it's, it's certainly a skill. I will say that, you know, as you learn what kind of goes together or even just, um, being open to trying something new, you know, you're going to stumble upon, chances are you're going to stumble upon some, some good combos, some good recipes and good ways of making the entrees, uh, that, you know, are going to have you just add more, more arsenal, as I think I heard Kate uh, say this week, our, one of our coaches, um, building your arsenal of recipes mm -hmm. and ways to mm -hmm. enjoy the meals. It's, you're just going to have more to work with. And um, one more approach I will just say I take, I view our entrees, and when I think about a recipe, yeah. as an ingredient rather than the main event. You know, it's, yeah. uh, you know, just the other day I was craving a, like an Asian uh, flavor. So I imagined what entree would, would, uh, enable that, uh, recipe to just come about. And, uh, sure enough, that chicken pot pie with some low sodium soy sauce, some rice cauliflower and some other veggies, ginger, it did the trick. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's my take on keep it staying open to variety. Just yeah. I like your ingredient skills. comment, Sandy. Yeah. <clears throat> that's great. I, I, you know, I think a lot of people have mentioned this before, but you use the entrees, you know, if you're in healthy solutions of phase two, mm -hmm. one of your big tasks is to eat a lot of produce yeah. and the entrees just do such a good job of uh, flavoring whatever other veggies are on your plate. Right. It's just great. Mm -hmm. The other thing though, when you mentioned the variety and the arsenal and everything, I, I think that you have to acknowledge also that variety with healthy food, mm -hmm. it doesn't just happen. It's not like the gap yeah. You know, all you have to do is walk backwards through life and you're going to eat a lot of variety of gap food. This really is a skill. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a major skill. And you have to look at it that way. You know, variety doesn't just happen. You have to put it under the microscope and really engage in the process of trying lots of different things, see what works for you. And then when you found one that you like, you put that uh, in your toolbox. So important. Yeah, exactly. And it just, it makes it more fun. It makes it more yeah. interesting. And, you know, when you're open to that type of thing and you hear somebody post a recipe they did, it's, there's just a pride to it and a pleasure and, and yeah. enjoyment. And it doesn't have to be complicated. So one of the things that we are, that we want to talk about, there's simple things that you can do that are quick and easy. And some of you really do enjoy cooking and have some very creative recipes that you've made to take a little bit more time, which is great for people that love to be in the kitchen and do that type of thing. So we've got both. So shall we launch into getting some yes, recipes, I think? I think. So it, yes, I think um, so. one of the things that we thought it would just be a little bit easier, we'd like to start with focusing on the updated mac and cheese and the crustless chicken pot pie, those two entrees. And then we'll talk about the um, breakfast entree in a little book, uh, bit. So get your um, typing fingers going here. So share recipes and ideas that you've tried and liked with either the new mac and cheese or the crustless chicken pot pie. And certainly we're looking for decision-free ideas, ways that you've enhanced that entree, one of those entrees. And certainly also for those of you who are in Healthy Solutions and phase two, you know, what have you done? What veggies, how have you prepared them? So, um, please add things in. And we're gonna be sharing some of the ones that have been posted both by our coaches and the community. Yeah, as people are thinking about that, and I will just say, guys, I'm seeing a few comments that the, the video has paused a few times. So I'm hoping it's not too frustrating for uh, everyone who's watching. Uh, oh, good. Uh, Kate just said it isn't paused on my screen. Please try to close and reopen. So I'm not sure what's happening there. So Nancy, while people are thinking about that, and again, we want your recipes. How have you enjoyed the, the, our new mac and cheese entree or our crustless chicken pot pie entree? Let's look at um, a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. This first one is one that Coach Kate did. Yes. And it's, it's Kate's mac and cheese with a kick. And um, Kate, when she cooks, I think she likes to, to do volume, like, um, you know, do a lot at one time. So the A, this made a volume, which I'll read what's in it, but also she baked it. So, you know, for those of you who've never tried baking an entree, that's really another whole 
um, taste. I love the entrees baked. Um, yeah, so, too. so you ready? This is, and, and we can post these um, recipes after, but this is two of the new mac and cheese. And then she's got eight cups of vegetables in here. So she's got an <laughs> that's entree eight. with, that's eight. <laughs> she's got four veggies with each entree. So she did four cups of chopped cauliflower, three cups of broccoli, a cup of peas. And then she added four cloves of crushed garlic and a tablespoon of Old Bay seasoning and some pepper and salt. Baked it for, and, and you know, 400 for about 40 minutes, 20 minutes stirred in 20. So this makes a nice big batch recipe, which, you know, if you're going to cook, get it done and then you've got more than one. So that's, that's a neat idea. Love it. Yep. Um, guys, I, I, there are enough people saying that the feed is stuck. Carolyn um, oh has just said it and um, Jennifer as well. So I think it keeps coming back, but then it keeps pausing. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening. So I think we may need to just forge ahead. Let me just see if Katie has uh, shared anything. No, nope, no, no text. I mean, me. it seems as though some people it's working fine and others it's not, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I hope they'll be able to go back and watch it. Hey, I want to just say something like being, coming back to Sandy's comment about it being an ingredient in your whole dish and then sort of building off Kate, so many vegetables with this. My first experience with the mac and cheese, you know, one of the things you guys know I like to do is I will just as a snack, I will steam a lot of zucchini and then I put summer squash on it. Mm. And I, so I did that. So I had at least three cups. It was a huge pile on the place. I'm going to see how far I can have the, the mac and cheese go. The guys, I couldn't believe how much, there's so much flavorful sauce in this new version of the mac and cheese. It was, it just made the entire plate so tasty. I already liked the zucchini, but it was a, it's a great entree for supporting a high volume of vegetables as Kate's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. recipe. Yeah, such there's a nice sauce on there. That's one of the benefits of all the new ones is there's mm -hmm. um, sauce with it, which is great. Yeah. Dana just mentioned guys, blend the mac and cheese in a blender, stir in fresh lemon juice and generous amounts of curry powder, mix with the crisp, crustless chicken pot pie and steamed broccoli. Wow. Yeah. Serve over the whole grain medley. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. That is really, well, talk about flavor. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. So you're, he used three different entrees, it sounds like. Wow. Debbie is asking, mm. uh, was the mac and cheese recently updated? Yeah, if so, I will try it again. Yeah. Yes, Debbie. That is exactly what we're talking about. Here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so you mentioned baking, Nancy. Let's just yeah. sort of put a finer point on it. I mean, yeah. we, we are literally talking about putting the wow. entrees and vegetables in the oven. What, what were some of the high points, guys, when we talked about this in the last couple of weeks in terms of how it enhances the flavor when you bake things? I, well, I think it dries it out and crisps it. I think that's one of the things uh, Sandy had into that. Yeah, that, that to me, me is the big thing. The, the flavors, the seasonings, they just become more pronounced. I, I, the way I put it is they pop, you know, they really are pronounced in a way that you just don't get uh, simply microwaving for a minute not that there's anything wrong with that but um of course you know time and place but but yeah baking and then you think about all the combinations with the vegetables that you can add in and have those flavors meld in the baking process it's just a win yep all right next recipe how about this one this looks absolutely amazing Ooh, the broccoli mac and cheese soup so this is along the lines of what we just heard about. It, it's a variation. Um, and this is, um, let me give credit to this. This is one of our viewers. This is Tiffany sent this in. And uh, basically she took the mac and cheese. She added a half a cup of organic chicken broth. And she combined those two um, I think she heated the um, heated the entree, combined it in a blender, and pureed it basically so that it was nice and smooth. And then she took a a package of the cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots, and and cooked those. You know that California mix. She put that in a uh, food processor to kind of chop it up fine, and then combined the two and heated it back up. This looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. Really does. Yes. Really. I'm trying yeah. that one. 
And let me see. She, I think she also, let me see if she mentioned. Uh, I don't know what spices she added to that. But anyway, that looks fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm actually needing to refresh um, our feed on my own um, phone here. Same thing. Huh. huh. Well, while you're doing that, I'll just mention that Gina, uh, getting back to the baking of the entrees, she feels like they really kind of hit that comfort food spot for her. Yeah. Something right. close to what grandma used to make. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Plus it smells, this makes the kitchen smell good. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. So the idea again is to be, as we want to go through quite a few more recipes and ideas, please keep the thoughts coming in the comment section. We're trying to take variety. When more is present, you will eat more and turn it around to our advantage by eating more healthy foods. So we've talked about entrees supporting veggie intake. Let's look at another one here, the Asian chicken pot soup. Well, that looks really hearty and just, that looks really? like a good food. <laughs> That's yeah. one of mine. Oh, that's, that's my bowl. <laughs> Andy, do you want to describe what you put in there? Yeah, I was just making a mention of it a moment ago, not in detail, just in passing. But yeah, this is my version of an Asian soup. And it really had the flavors of egg drop soup, even though there's no eggs or in it, but it had that flavor to it and that kind of that consistency. But uh, it's got some broth in there, rice, cauliflower, carrots, peas, red pepper, mm. um, half a tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce and a half a teaspoon of ground ginger along with the crustless pot pie and a really a fantastically flavorful dish mm. so good very nice you just cook it all together in a saucepan so this is another <laughs> cooking method i i put it in a saucepan just cooked it all up together wonderful mm -hmm. and and again for those of you on decision free think of you know think of the mac and cheese think of the um, crustless chicken pot pie and what spices would you add to it? Um, what cooking method? Yeah. Uh, can you think of another entree you would combine with that and, you know, have a double entree or can you picture the HMR chicken soup with it? Or so, you know, any ideas that you have decision-free, um, please add those in. Um, I was thinking about that, Nancy, and this could totally be made leaving out the vegetables and maybe reducing the broth just a little bit. And mm -hmm. if you'd still get that good Asian flavor. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Because you can certainly use the, um, the low sodium soy sauce and the ginger yep. spice with mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All right. So more variety. And that is our theme here. You know, I would just add another perspective here, guys, for just a moment. Let me just stop my screen for just one second. You know, we're talking about uh, using HMR foods the, and portion controlled entrees. And this whole idea of food cues, things that influence our eating and, and us being unaware of it. We talked about large portion sizes, uh, increasing our calorie intake. There, let's look at the other side of this. Mm. There's research on portion controlled foods like HMR entrees and how, what an advantage they provide when you're trying to manage your calories more tightly to lose weight or better manage weight. Nancy, you and I have re researched, um, discussed this research in many different many times. Yeah. But in 2016, guys, this was such interesting research. Mm -hmm. They looked at 45 different studies. That's a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And they compared people who were trying to lose weight using portion controlled meals versus what they call traditional dieting. You all know what that means. You know, conventional dieting where you're going out and you're, you're buying your foods, you're measuring them, you're preparing them, the whole thing. Every study, 45 out of 45, showed that people using meal replacements controlled their calories better and lost weight uh, more quickly compared to the free choice or conventional diets. Very, very robust research. They even followed it up in 2019 and looked at, well, what about a year out? The people lose the weight, but then immediately gain it back. Every study, again, this is a subgroup of the studies, going out as far as four years, people that lost the weight with the mirror places lost more weight and were keeping off more weight compared to those on traditional diets. Right. So well, I wonder if there's maybe a question for the audience. Yeah. Um, you know, I think most people have experience with conventional dieting you know, right. making all of your choices 
what's an advantage that you get from portion controlled entrees versus the experience of free choice dieting? Yeah, let's see it in the comments. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. Yeah, and many yeah, of you have probably done it both ways, right? You've been, um, you know, worked on dieting on your own, uh, as well as now using the HMR entrees for, you know, you can speak to it as it relates to phase one and phase two. Uh, what have you found the advantages to be? I can speak to um, the kind of the difference between my, my personal experience between using meal replacements and the traditional method of picking and choosing my foods, trying to assemble some sort of diet for myself, just wondering, am I meeting my nutritional needs? There were just a lot of questions around, am I choosing the right foods? It was, to me, it was just confusing and cumbersome and not effective, <laughs> not as effective as meal replacements, uh, where it's just um, easy portion controlled and convenient, convenient, no calorie counting. Yeah, it's uh, just the, the work that it takes. I the mean, work you, is exhausting. You almost need to not be working, you know, in order to be <laughs> able to. I mean, I mean that sincerely, or you know, not active when you're retired, whatever it is. But you know, the idea of like, yeah, prepare, measuring, preparing, cooking, yeah, you know, being able to have that variety, and it, it just it's hard. It's, yeah. it's really really hard. Yeah, every step you add is a drain on you cognitively mm -hmm. <laughs> literally even if it's not a huge amount of willpower it's still a sense of your will to have to portion things out and prepare them or whatever so you, you start to take advantage of when all of the decisions you don't have to make by using portion control mirror places you begin to see why that research is just so one-sided in the direction of better calorie management when you're using portion controlled entrees I mean, I mean, even in phase two, the idea of just continuing, just it's yeah. quick and easy. I feel confident. I get full, you know, and then let me look at, all right, dinner, at dinner, I'll, you know, do some more of my own prep, but the rest of the day, it's just so much simpler. Let's, um, let's move back into some recipes. We yeah. have a, yeah. a, quite a few were offered up around the uh, crustless chicken pot pie. So I'm just going to share my screen again here. Here we have chicken pot pie with bouillon and mixed vegetables. This was interesting, boy. So um, this is Tara, and she um, she combined it with a bit of chicken bouillon, and she put it over vegetables. Um, and then, very creative, she air fried some chickpeas. Oh. And then she put them in the a coffee grinder to grind them down, and then put Put, you can see the little spots. You put that over that as a little bit of a crust huh. on top. Yeah. And then she added Frank's, which I'm, I think is some, I know is a seasoning. I'm not, a, is, is that hot sauce? Frank's? Yeah, it's a hot sauce. All right. So she put that on because she just loves that. So really, she said, this is so good. So mm. love the creativity. Yeah, really good. Let's jump to another one. It's pretty straightforward. I looked at this one. I said, okay, that's a lot of food. It looks delicious to me. And I also said to myself, you know what? I don't eat enough red bliss potatoes. I love red bliss potatoes. <laughs> it's yeah. like this, this image was a reminder to me. I don't know when was the last time I had them. Yeah. And I love this is Ellen. And again, I think this is the point. You don't have to do a lot of elaborate things. So she, she took some um, diced, you know, red potatoes. She diced them up into chunks and, and, um, steamed them or microwaved them for seven or eight minutes and then combined them with the entree. Quick and easy and simple. And she added Penzi's Northwoods seasoning. Oh, Penzi's makes good seasonings. I knew somebody would be familiar with that. Not, <laughs> I confess. Nancy was waiting for someone to comment. I, I confess. So is that something you order online, I'm assuming? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. It is. Uh-huh. All right. So Penzi's, you guys, if you don't know about it, it's P-E-N- Z-E-Y, we've got an endorsement from two people that they're really good if you're still, if you're looking for ideas for um, new flavorings. Great, all right, how about a hit on a low starch veggie? Look at yeah, this. This is, this is awesome. Again, Ooh. this is Dick, quick and easy. He just took steamed cauliflower, combined it with the chicken pot, um, crustless chicken pot pie, and then he added one of our favorite 
uh, seasonings, the everything but the bagel. Oh, I'm mean, one of my very favorites. Yeah, it's, it's and you know, time. quick, easy, delicious. And the gravy in that pot pie covers those vegetables nicely and flavors them up. Perfect. And mm -hmm. yeah, and Dick said, this is now in my lunch rotation. Yeah. So again, you know, for lunch, especially you want quick and easy, right? Oh, yeah. And look at how much food that is. It's great. Mm -hmm. Marsha just said, I'm still stuck on flavor God. <laughs> we'll oh, well, that's, they're <laughs> very good too. Flavor God. That's great, Marsha. I love it. All right, you guys ready for another delicious looking recipe? Yeah, okay. this, one, this one was very creative, you guys. Extensive. I don't know how many people saw this, but this was um, Trisha. And I'm going to explain this a, a little bit here. So she, she had the, you can see there's a whole dish. She did a huge dish of veggies, potatoes and peas and carrots and et cetera. And then she, um, put the chicken pot pie over it. I don't know how many, she used more than one because this is, she did two servings. So again, two, two of the entrees with all the vegetables. And then I know this looks like mashed potato on top, but this is palmini mashed potatoes. I had heard of palmini made into pasta. I hadn't heard this. Uh, I, think, uh, I think she said she got it on Amazon, but palmini is palm, hearts of palm. So it's very low calorie and apparently mm. they make it dried. And so you can make it into a mashed potato, which you put on top and oh. back to baking. So really incredible um, dish there. Wow. Little prep required, but boy, filling and it looks delicious. Really? Yeah. Try Almini mashed potatoes, Nance. I hadn't heard of them. This is new, um, but, you know, really great to know about. It's certainly a way to have mashed potatoes that are lower calorie if that's something that you want to go for. Mm -hmm. All right. How about um, a recipe for our decision-free program members? Yes. Look There's at that. A lot of creativity here. Yeah. Biscuits and crustless chicken pot pie. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks fantastic. I'm not thinking of being in the box with, with this particular recipe. Looks fantastic. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Um, mixed the chicken soup um, and the cereal. That's how they made the biscuit. They, they, they combined the soup and the cereal and stirred in some water to make the biscuit dough and then kind of, you know, cooked them in a pan and then put it over the chicken yeah, uh, princess chicken pot pie. That one's that one's my creation as well. And uh, my husband saw that and said, "Those aren't biscuits; those are pancakes." <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I said close enough. <laughs> it's still Stickler. had that kind of bread feel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, very creative. So we've reviewed a few different recipes for both the mac and cheese and the crustless chicken pot pie. Um, most of these had vegetables included in them, which might wanted to make sure we included a few that were uh, more appropriate for those of you on the decision-free plan. I'll just hit one more research study, guys, that we had talked about in preparation for tonight, where we've already established that the greater variety of higher calorie foods, people will eat more. Um, and what we've said, let's turn this, this subliminal food cue around to our advantage, where if you can have more healthy food, you are more likely to eat more of that. And the research does in fact bear that out. One of my absolute favorite studies of all time, they sat people down on one day, gave them an entree, just a part of the plate, and then filled the rest of the plate. It was a little more than three full cups of their favorite vegetable, their most preferred vegetable. And they monitored their intake on that day. And then on a different day, they sat the same people down, same entree, one serving of their favorite preferred vegetable and two other vegetables. So now you have a variety of vegetables, same amount of food. The results were completely one-sided. When more variety was present, people ate more vegetables, even when on day one, it was their favorite vegetable. So that's the power and the potency of putting variety on your plate. You can really turn this around 
to your advantage. Don't, we love that study, don't we, guys? We, we do. And Rick, I want to just throw out one. I'm just curious. So be prepared to, to um, post here, you guys. Has anybody discovered, because the vehicle, the entrees really are a good vehicle for the vegetables, right? If you're on in healthy solutions or um, phase two, has anyone found that they eat vegetables more vegetables or a different kind of vegetable because of the entrees. Because I know Sandy and I both have an example of yeah. that. Yeah. You're, want to share your story? Yeah. Sandy? My, my example involves Rick years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mentioning how he enjoyed uh, canned carrots with the turkey chili. Yes. And, uh, you know, canned carrots have never been on my shopping list, never thought about buying them, but um, I also know that I'm not real great about getting orange vegetables in things from the orange category. So, I, you know, staying open to new ideas. I tried it and I always have a can of canned carrots in my pantry at the ready because I know it's a go to recipe that's easy. Throw it together. And I actually liked it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so good. That, that's when you just wouldn't think. I don't even know how I discovered that. I think we were on a big beta carotene push at the time <laughs> with HMR and, um, and tracking the colors yes. of our different fruits and veggies. And, and I was weak in the orange color ones. And uh, so, yeah, that probably is what pushed me to, to try that combo. Ooh, and, and another uh, example of that is, you know, Sandy, it would have been easy to say, oh, I don't think I like that idea and right? just dismiss yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But when you, it's often the case that when you try something, you don't know really unless you try it. Right. And you might not have liked it, but you have pleasantly surprised that you did like it. And I've, I've had that happen to me so many times where I'm thinking, oh, no, all right, I'll try it. And it's like, oh, okay, this is really good. The one for me, and this goes way back, was uh, spinach. And of course, that's cooked spinach is so good for you, right? And oh, God. I never ate cooked spinach. And then I probably shouldn't bring this up, but then the, I put it with the chicken Creole and I loved it. And that got me started. So now I have cooked spinach almost every day with almost any entree. So that's a one key vegetable that I feel uh, is particularly that I don't think to eat cooked spinach on its own, but boy, I put it in every day with an entree, just one example of yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had that with the mac and cheese, but I. Oh, I, that's excellent! Oh, I'm gonna love that. Mm. Oh, totally. totally. Yeah. All right. All right. The, the research on the spinach is just lights out in terms of yeah, yeah. benefits. Those wow. those leafy dark greens really yeah. good for you. Yeah, it's just amazing. All right, so let's let's now move into our last entree, the breakfast entree: sausage and potatoes. Guys, this was, was a long time coming, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had this request. For, this was a major request for a long time. Yeah, and you know, this one really fills a hole for me because I've always said, some mornings, I just want something savory. I want to eat healthy, uh, but when I, it just the shake or the cereal, I just not in the mood for the sweet. And so I've used HMR entrees as a tool for breakfast time to give me that savory hit. I've, I've done that for a long time. I've shared it in these Facebook lives, but this was another experience entirely uh, because now Nancy under, you know, under your urging, I'm now adding vegetables to it and, and vegetables just go so well with this sausage and potatoes entree. And, you know, again, it, anytime you're adding vegetables, whatever, whether you're using it for breakfast or some other time of the day, you know, think about that starting out the day, having vegetables, you know, for if you're struggling and getting in at least five fruits and vegetables, getting an early start, right, makes a big difference. Yep. Sometimes people wait too long in the day to get started, and then they can't fit five in or more than five. So, you know, having another reason to start off with vegetables or certainly fruits with the other things um, that's always a positive because it, it, it's know, just so reinforcing at, at noontime to look and say, wow, I've got servings. I'm just adding to yeah. a, a ball that's already rolling down the highway. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's look at a, a few recipes and let, let's just ask yes. our audience, are there any recipes or ideas that you have tried with the sausage and potatoes breakfast entree? Yeah. Please, that, please post, share it, share what you got. Yeah. Oh, that looks familiar. I had that for lunch. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell us about it. 
<laughs> yeah, half of that dish is still in my refrigerator right now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's a pretty big... Now, listen, this is decision-free. Those of you decision-free, listen up. You can awesome. see this is entrees and chicken soup. There is no... There are, excuse me, bad language. There are no vegetables in this. So full disclosure, guys, I meant to make a completely different recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to make... A mac and cheese, uh, Trisha uh, donated a, a recipe to us and it had the mac and cheese and uh, I believe the rotini and the chicken soup baked. I went askew somewhere in my uh, recipe following and I did the rotini and the sausage and potato with the soup. Uh, and the soup was just made with four ounces of water, combined it all together, baked it 350 for 20 minutes covered till it got really bubbly and then i uncovered it and put it under the broiler for five minutes oh that's, that's, that's where the, the brownie key right came. there <laughs> um looking back i'd probably add a little less water maybe three ounces but yeah. um so so good yeah, it looks rich it looks super rich so then it got me dreaming you guys <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like sausage in their you know marinara sauce so i was thinking the sausage and potato with like the um the penne pasta with meatballs and that, yeah. that nice, nice, rich sauce would also go really well in this recipe. Here's another one of my philosophies that I, I talk about all the time is, you know, you look at that and think, why would you put those two entrees together? That seems like a really weird combination. And yeah. I still, to this day, yep. and I've tried a lot of different entrees together. I have never found two that I didn't like, yeah. even though they sound terrible, they end up tasting really good. Yeah. So a lot of them you almost have to do accidentally. So this is great uh, uh, endorsement, Sandy, that these two uh, go well together. Yeah, yeah. I know Coach Annika puts the sausage and potato with the veggie stew quite often. She really oh, that likes makes that sense. combo. Yeah, that's yeah. mm -hmm. great. Let's All look right. at another um, recipe here, guys. This one looks incredible. Yeah. Um, that was my breakfast. Sausage <laughs> and potato with hash browns. Oh, that's that, that looks Here's great. a tip on hash browns, guys. They do have in the box hash browns. You just got to read the ingredients mm -hmm. and make sure there's no added oil or any other crazy stuff. I just look for one ingredient, <laughs> potatoes, and uh, those are the ones I buy. But air fryer. Now, do you get them? Are they frozen? Are they frozen, Sandy? Or yeah, these are frozen from Trader Joe's. Uh, I have a, a full cup. And then a, a cup of the peppers and onion mix from the mm. freezer as well. That looks I put delicious. those in the air fryer frozen. Oh, wow. Salt and pepper. And then just top it with the uh, the sausage and potato. That looks it. fabulous. Really you can good. add That's an great. to that too. Yeah. And make it uh, phase two. Yeah. That which is actually what we're going to show next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's um, go to, I'll just say, Marsha, just an endorsement from the previous uh, recipe. HMR entrees are created to all mix together. Don't be afraid to mix any of them. I've done them all. Oh, I yay, Marsha. See, another one agrees with me. Great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm i with you too on that. Yeah. Just so many different flavors that you can create by uh, mixing things together. Fabulous. Right. All right. Let's look at another one here. Look at this. Wow. Absolutely great. This is uh, Dick again. Dick, yes. And, and it, all this is, and he emphasized this, is the entree and two eggs. He didn't do anything else to it. And he said, it's fabulous. And of course this is phase two, obviously because of the eggs. And he said, it's my new favorite breakfast, phase two. Um, it, it, and he said, sausage and potatoes and gravy with two eggs doesn't really need anything added. Wow. And we've heard that from other people. The egg with this is, um, is very popular for phase two. Well, you know, I was looking at the uh, protein, you guys, just for the heck of it. Yeah. And by the time the two eggs, 12 to 14 grams of protein and the entree has 13. So that's a nice hit at breakfast. You're getting 25, 20, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 25 ish grams of protein. That's a very good hit of protein. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Nance, as you know, coach, um, this is my weekend plan. I took on this uh, as part of structuring my uh, mornings. I'm going to be doing this exact dish this weekend. I took that on. And of course, if I could push a button, I would add some veggies in there, some more veggies to get a little bit or some fruit on the side just to get a serving in or two. But it's, uh, 
you know, look at that quick and easy and, and, and a real hit of protein and definitely yep. your savory, you know, I'm so. with you on that. And I, I think there are so many different veggies that I would like with that. Um, the list is long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, before we finish, I want to just quickly share um, something that I shared with you guys. And I wanted to just uh, share it with our viewers. I had gotten I was kind of inspired, Nancy, by some of that National Weight Control Registry yep. data that shows that these people, the last time we looked at it, they were keeping off at something like 72 pounds after seven years. That's an incredible level of success. And there are characteristics that they have in common. One of them is that their diets are very consistent. So I was just sort of playing around with a push with our sausage and potato entree. And I said, just, just to see what I could discover, I said, let me, I'm going to, for seven days in a row, I'm going to have the same breakfast because I, I love any savory breakfast. And here we ha- finally have a breakfast entree. So I took my great mixer veggie, green beans, only 52 calories for the can. And, and this is what I had. I had this for breakfast for seven days in a row. And um, first of all, you guys can appreciate when you take 14 and a half ounces of green beans and a half a pound of sausage and potatoes and gravy, 22 and a half ounces for only 270 calories. I think the benefits there are, go without saying. So it was a lot of food for the calories for sure. But the insight that I gained and it's, I think it speaks to you know, everyone in the program's experience at some point with just using meal replacements is normally breakfast comes around and it's sort of a, a set of decisions. What am I going to eat for breakfast? And then when am I going to eat it? By committing to just the consistency of this every day, the whole what am I going to eat wasn't even in my brain. So it was like less cognitive load, less, less thinking required. And all it was was when am I going to have what I've committed to doing for seven days. I'm not suggesting that people do that, but I have to say, Nancy, and we talked about this in, in phase two today, I'm really excited now to expand the green beans, which I did seven days in a row, to so many different veggies. But I, I think I'd like to continue that streak of going with the breakfast entree uh, just because it's just so easy to do and I really enjoy it. Which is perfect. And I think, I think there really is something to be said for the routines, right? Certain things. And even if, you know, for example, I have an entree every day for lunch, I just, I find it easier. So I don't have the same one. I, that's where I do a lot of variety, but it's still not, there's no decisions. Like I know I'm going to have an entree. I know I'm going to have vegetables with it. And it's just what vegetables have I prepared? What entree will go with it? That's not too much on my brain. Um, because I'm not figuring out anything else, you know, multigrain cereal in the morning with fruit, whatever it is. But if you've got some of those routines and then, you know, any kind of variety, uh, cause I, I confess if I had the same entree and the same veggies every day, I, I that would be hard for me, Yeah, but I get you, that, but you, you know, did it for a week. It was excellent. And now you're going to expand beyond yeah, that. And, and again, 12 calories. And now, I mean, compare that to other savory breakfasts, right? Oh, 12 so, calories an ounce. I mean, that 12 is- 12 calories an ounce. Sandy, you had a couple of examples of um, to compare this with, right? Yeah, I get my head spinning because I've got a couple of um, examples that are on the opposite end of the calorie per ounce spectrum. And these are really common. Uh, McDonald's, okay? Yep. Sausage McMuffin with egg. So- 5.8 ounces of food, not much, really not much food. Uh, 480 calories for the whole McMuffin. And if you break that down, that's 83 calories per ounce. So compared to Rick's 12 calories yeah, 12, per ounce breakfast. 12 calories per ounce. And you said 5.8. So it's it's basically four times more food Yeah. for this, this, almost half as many calories. Rick's breakfast. Yeah. Not to mention the nutrition yeah. difference. Yeah, I like that ridiculous. comparison, Nancy. That's yeah. perfect. There's yeah. another one, um, which <laughs> even I think, I think this is a, a you know, a, a coffee cake muffin from Do- uh, Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm, I'm reading this here. This is just crazy. Um, 590 calories for a muffin. I don't know the, you know, how, you know, how big it Probably is. Probably five ounces. I'd say it's five. About five, five ounces. Yeah. Yep. So if you break that down, 118 calories per ounce. If you follow our, you know, HMR calorie guide, that's a 10. 
That's a 10. And Rick's is a, uh, what is it? A one, one and a half your breakfast oh, yeah. on the calorie guide? Yeah, it'd be well, a calories per ounce. I can't Talk get over the Opposite ends of the calorie spectrum. Absolutely. Fabulous. And I don't know about you, but you know, when you eat a sweet, sweeter muffin like that, a number one is nowhere near as filling. No. And then all you want to do is eat another one. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, at least for me, once that happens, I want to eat another one. So absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, and it's usually not all you're eating because again, it's not going to fill you up. That much. could be a snack, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a muffin. Yeah. It's not even breakfast. Yeah. Um, all right. So hopefully, I mean, we've, I think we need to sum this up here. We're pretty yeah. much, um, um, we've done it here. So, you know, we've been talking about variety and how it can support your goals. And that's whether you're working to be in the box in phase one, or you're working to better manage your calories in phase two. And of course, we've been focusing on the newest entrees here, along with vegetables and fruits. And we really hope everyone got some new ideas that you can try this week to help you stay in track. And again, as Sandy mentioned, variety doesn't just happen. You do have to work at it. And hopefully our discussion tonight has reinforced that it's worth the work to add more variety to your healthy eating repertoire. It really, it just makes your job that much easier. So as always, we really appreciate all of you that are here, all of the comments that you've shared. And we are hoping that a lot of people are watching this after the fact. And we look forward to seeing you again next Thursday. We'll be back here at seven o'clock and it'll be our Halloween episode. That's right. <laughs> so something to look forward to. Uh, so good night, everyone. Yeah, I hope we see you next Thursday, guys. Yeah. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye. For